Hi, good morning. Um, I chose the, the Psalm 37, so it's a Psalm of David, and um, it's about wisdom uh, over worry. So basically, David wrote this direct to men, not to God. So to teach us how to trust in God in uh, difficult times and to strengthen our, our faith. So I'm going to read the Psalm 37, 1 till 9, if that's okay. So it's that, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then we live safely in land and prosper. Take the light in the Lord and will give you your heart's desire. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn. And the justice of your coast will shine like a noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being hungry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed. But those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. So David was a young shepherd who has been called by God to be a king. Then became a musician and um, later defeated a giant and became King Saul's favorite and son, his son's best friend. But later, King Saul was scared they would seek him to obtain his throne, so he tried to kill him. <laughs> so imagine David, a young shepherd, be called to be a king. When all the brothers was against it and done everything to destroy that call, or even he be forced to go and play to King Saul just to calm down his anger, or being hiding in a cave, just running away from that one he gave everything to him one day before. So it will be hard. And I, David, more than anyone else, knew how hard it is to avoid anger, worry, even fear. So he started writing this psalm, and he starts with, don't worry about the wicked, or envy those who do wrong. How is it to envy someone in a, something in our life, like a car, a house, a friendship, anything? We, we all envy something in our lives at some point. But jealous uh, tries desire, and desire tries evil, and evil, <coughs> desire, can destroy someone's life. And uh, we still don't notice, everything goes away. So I'm gonna tell a little bit about my story. 20 years ago, I came to England, and I started, I left my kids in Portugal for a couple of years to actually do my life here. My plan was going back to Portugal and build a business there and stay there. But the things went in another way wrong. I find a good job. I had a proof for mortgage. I had a school, so I decided to do everything right and go to the government, to the court, and bring my, my kids legally to this country. His father decides he has to take the son away from me, not because he wants to be with the son, but because I don't have the right to start a new life without him. So I've been five months without seeing my son, because every time I try to reach him and ask him to see my son, sorry. He said to me, no, just when the court authorized them. And there's nothing we can do by the law. We just have to wait for the decision. And I remember one day my son called me. He was five at that time. And he started crying and said, Mom, please come and help me. Come and get me from here. I want to do it. But I lied to him. I said, darling, I can't. You are in only this with your dad. You have to be there. But I promise when the holidays finish, I'll go there and pick you up. And he come down. That day I went for a walk. And <laughs> I went to a church. And I went straight to the first row and I sat right in the middle. And I looked to that cross with Jesus on it. And my first thought was, I came here for you to help me. But how you can help me if you don't even help your son? And I've been inside of me all the time. And I would start crying. And then in the end, I said, okay, 
if you give my son back to you, I will do everything you want. I want my son. That day I went home. And I fell asleep, which I didn't done for a long time. <laughs> I'll tell the truth. And when I wake up, my mom said, you look different today. I said, Mom, I got a feeling something good is going to happen. So the court called me that day. And so we've been doing, seeing all the case here. And I think you're your superiority. We sent the letter today. That was on Thursday. I need you here on Monday because we're going to close that case. What's so happy? And I did get my son back. And I <laughs> so, so basically, he, he was happy, and I learned with that, we need to trust. Uh, it's not an option, it's a need to trust in God. We are all weak without him, we do nothing. So we need him. Well, <laughs> sorry. And he will, he promised, he promised he will protect us always, he's going to be with us all the time. And I trust that, but we need to do something. For that. And it's everything here. And this little bit I read from Psalm 37 is here. So we say on verse number three Trust in the Lord and do good. So to trust in the Lord, you need to feed yourself with the word. It's everything here. If you read the Bible, you trust in Him. You start trusting in Him. <laughs> so is that what we need? Just feed ourselves. We say on John 6, verse 35, Then Jesus declared, I'm the bread of life. Whatever comes to me will never go hungry, and whatever believes in me never will thirst. It's the only thing we need to do. He says as well on verse number 4, Take delight in the Lord. Spend time with God. Build a relationship with Him. Because if you build a relationship with Him, your desires will be the same as His desires. So He will give you everything you want. On verse number five, we say, commit everything you do to the Lord. Well, no, yes, sorry. <laughs> Seek God's presence. Pray, worship. Commit your life to him. Give your life in his hands and trust in him and his will. Say on verse number seven, be still in the presence of the Lord. Just be still. Just sit aside in silence. Give to him his worry, your worries, everything that bother you. And will help you. He listen to you. He going to answer you. Not even, maybe not the way you expect, but will answer you. Say on verse number eight, stop being hangry. Turn from your rage. Everyone's get hungry at some point on your life. I get hungry a lot of times on my life. But the most important thing is don't lose your temper. And if you can't do it, if you think you can't do it by yourself, just trust in God. Ask him to help and he'll help you to control that anger. Just ask him. Because we must believe her and we must trust in him. Because it's nothing is better than live with love and in mercy. He gave it to us, like compassion, everything. Just only him can give it to us and he's never, never going to abandon us. He'll always be by our sides. Because God cares. God is love. Thank you. Good morning, church. I'm, I'm very scared. I don't know why I'm so nervous about talking. I think I can hide behind the singing. So, um, yeah, I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was so excited when we started doing the summer in the Psalms because I love the Psalms. I love everything about the Psalms. It's the most realistic thing and the most human thing I've ever read in the Bible. Because some of the Psalms uh, praise the Lord and praise the Lord and some of the Psalms are really emotional and lots of struggles and I, I feel that. So I think that's why I, I, I truly I love the Psalms. It also became more apparent to me when John Scott prophesied and I realized why I have such a strong feeling for the Psalms and it is a gifting that God had put in me so it does mean a lot to me. 
Um, this morning, I'm going to talk just a few minutes about Psalm 91, uh, which I'm sure everyone has known and, and read, but I'm going to read to you anyway. So Psalm 91 is, and I'm reading the New Living Translation. It says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge and my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras, and you will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with long life and give them salvation. Now, I'm, I'm sure many of us have known the Psalms. We've, we've, we've heard it. We've done it. But to me, the Psalm, obviously, it's protection. You can hear that it's about protecting. But to me, it's a Psalm of hope. It is a prayer, and it is a psalm of faith and trust in God, which is what Annabella spoke of, about trusting in God. Psalm 91 speaks of truth, and it's an encouragement. Why it's meaningful to me is because I've been in many situations where I've put my own energy and what I thought was the right thing, and it never worked out, and it's always failed when I've put myself in something. Sometimes trusting God is much easier said than it's done. How do you trust God when your whole world is falling apart? People close to you are dying, people, there's, there's diseases, there's wars. How do you trust God? He understands that it's not easy. He understands. That's the key thing. What I feel about the Psalms is that he understands, which is why he gives us the positive side of it is that I will rescue those who love me. Uh, when they call on me, I will answer. He doesn't say, I might answer if I feel like it. He says, I will answer. To me, that's the positive side of it, is that he does not abandon you. He does not leave you in the lurch and expect you to just get on with it. When you trust in him, the strength that comes from that trust is something that I can't even put into words. And that's what I've experienced, and I'm sure if you've been through things where you know it's going one way and you've seen God intervene, that joy, that peace, and that strength that comes from that by just trusting in God is something so amazing. I feel that this psalm doesn't deceive you. It's honest. It's an honest psalm. It doesn't present itself as everything's going to be perfect, everything's going to be nice. No. It's a psalm that says these things can happen, these things will happen, but you will be victorious and you will overcome because nothing will land on you. Why? Because the Lord is for you. The Lord defends you. Sometimes we focus more our worries on the physical thing that's happening and we forget about the spiritual element of it. The end is eternal life. So whatever we are going through, the end result for us is eternal life. The psalm speaks of so many things that I feel relevant for us today. Deadly diseases, wars, enemy attacks. These are scary, can cause us fear. But look how the tone of the psalm changes when God declares what he will do for us. He says he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. He says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. He is a shield to us. He's a shield to each and every one of you. He is your refuge. Think of yourself standing off against spiritual enemies. You're all alone, 
and you're standing and all these enemies are attacking you. And at the right moment, God just surrounds you and covers you and shields you. To me, that is an emotional thing because I've seen and felt him do that many of times where he's intervened and covered me and put a shield around me. That is what he is doing. You may not see it physically, but he is doing that. And the things that you are facing is leading up to, to him. It's going to lead you up to him. You just got to trust in him. Psalm 91 is also for me, it's my affirmation of, what, of who God is and his power. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in him, I will trust. If you read it as an affirmation, it becomes personal to you. It changes the whole dynamic of the psalm. It becomes so real and becomes more than just words. If you are to read Psalms as an affirmation, I'll just take a few verses, where it says, I live in the shelter of the Most High. I find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I declare of the Lord, He is my refuge, my place of safety, my God in Him I will trust. He will rescue me from every attack and protect me from deadly disease. If you carry on and says, I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night or the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread dead, dreaded diseases. Though a thousand fall at my side, ten thousand around are dying around me. These evils will not touch me. I do believe that when you change it around and you make it personal to you, it changes something. It does something to you. Not just for Psalm 91, I think it's for many of the Psalms. If you understand the, real, the realization of it, it does something to you. It has to do something to you. It has to touch you. Why would God put this in the Bible? Why would God put Psalms like these in the Bible? It's because he understands. I feel he understands. And sometimes we seek encouragement through people. We seek encouragement through what we hear. The encouragement needs to come from the word of God and the voice of God. Because there's no hope like the word of God. Psalms like this is where you turn. They represent hope, protection, and the love of God. So last year, I think the worship team can come up because we're going to lead in the song. Um, we wrote a song based on Psalm 91. I don't believe we wrote it. I believe it was given to us and lent to us. Um, it, it was nothing. I did nothing except to receive it. But it was in a time that I wasn't working and I was very upset about it, didn't like it. Also, things were going around us that wasn't good. But one day I woke up in the morning, did my routine, knelt down and prayed, and then I opened to the psalm. And I opened to Psalm 91 and I read it. But my thought process after that is what I feel was the Holy Spirit filling me. And I didn't even know it. The thought that came to my mind was, these are, if these are all songs of David, and he sang these songs, I wonder what tune he sang for Psalm 91. That was all I know and all I remember. And I felt the Holy Spirit fill me up. And what came out of this was the song that we are going to do. That's how God works. He, you don't, don't expect something big to happen and something like huge, mind-blowing. He's so subtle in his peace and he's so subtle with the things that he, he gives to you. Don't take it for granted. After the song was written, a whole lot of trials and tribulation came and the key thing is, I will trust in him. So this morning, as I leave the song, and we leave the song, sorry, as a team, I want you to trust him. Just as Annabella said, it's not easy, but trust in him. Even if it doesn't make sense to you, it cannot possibly work out, I am telling you to trust in Him because He can do all things. He is such a mighty God, such a powerful God. So if you can stand with me as we sing the song, you, you do know the song, so it's not a brand new song. But I want you to, to think about what you are facing this morning, what you are going through. Maybe you are going through something, your family is going through something, people close to you are going through something. I want you to, to sing the song with us and know that God is your refuge, He is your shield, and in Him you will trust. Amen?
Yeah. 